Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Singer Decision Polarizes UAV World. Vote on FAA Continuing Resolution Defeated in Late Monday Vote. Warflight adds multiple features to mobile web clients. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson of September 26, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The legal system continues to recraft the potential regulatory landscape for UAS. In a rush to try to control something they likely don't understand very well, the city of Newton, Massachusetts, passed a law last December that banned drone flights below 400 feet over private and public property without the consent of the landowner and required local registration. Now, though that the law has been overturned by a federal judge in Massachusetts, thanks to the efforts of a physician and inventor living in Newton, Dr. Michael Singer, who is also an FAA-certified drone pilot. Singer challenged four sections of the local ordinance, representing himself. He said that the city's ordinance was moot because it attempts to regulate an almost exclusively federal area of law. Federal District Judge William G. Young agreed with Singer. Young wrote, Congress has given the FAA the responsibility of regulating the use of airspace for aircraft navigation and to protect individuals and property on the ground and has specifically directed the FAA to integrate drones into the national airspace. The decision is not likely to have any specific impact on any law other than Newton's, though a number of municipalities have been waiting for the outcome of this case before making their own regulatory decisions. In a Monday vote to authorize a six-month extension of funding for the FAA, something strange happened. With a September 30th deadline for the required extension just days away, senior Democrats expressed disapproval for a distantly related part of the bill that concerned flood insurance and tax credits for hurricane victims and voted against the whole effort. Failing in the latest attempt to keep the FAA fully operational by a vote of 245 to 171, Less than the required two-thirds majority needed to see passage in the current fast-track effort to see the bill through to completion. The next step is likely to be a bit simpler effort that will require but a basic majority, though that effort may see serious opposition as well. Most of the Democratic heartburn is not with the FAA extension, but extraneous political issues, including Representative Nancy Pelosi's attempt to cajole support for DACA. Worse, in order to see this whole process through to a workable conclusion, it also has to pass muster among Senate Democrats who don't seem to be any more happy with this effort than their House counterparts. Failure to reauthorize the FAA would be messy, forcing the FAA to curtail many non-critical services, furloughing thousands of staffers, and creating lasting havoc for the agency. We'll keep you updated. After the break, Forflight adds multiple features to mobile web clients. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Progressive Aerodyne's C-Ray Elite offers turbocharged Rotax Power and Garmin G3X Touch Avionics. Incredibly well equipped, you can fly away in this best in category Amphib for less than $160,000. Visit C-Ray.com for more details. Welcome back. Forflight has released several new features for both its mobile apps and web-based platforms. Route Advisors now shows a visual preview of all route options on an interactive map. After filing your flight plan in Forflight, you will receive a push notification to your device when ATC issues a revised expected route and when adverse weather conditions arise. Flight notifications are delivered automatically. The Add Next Flight button in the Flights view makes it faster and easier to plan multi-leg flights by carrying forward departure, aircraft details, payload, fuel policy, and more. In addition, you can now export your flight plan in ICAO format. The 4Flight Map Engine has a significantly upgraded base map. 
Schedule flight search and maps view allows the user to enter a tail number, aircraft call sign, or commercial flight number. While users that fly the Sirius XM SXAR1 aviation receiver will now see icing turbulence and surface analysis layers. For the web-based platform, an improved Navlog interface that expands for better viewing and also syncs between web and mobile, an Add Next Flight button to improve multi-leg flight planning, and faster radar loading. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. The Southwest Ohio Regional Fly-In is October 1, 2017 in Blanchester, Ohio. The light sport aircraft are prominent, but all aircraft are welcome. Free grilled hot dogs and hamburgers. Free camping available Saturday night with port let and electric available. LSA displays and vendors welcome no charge. October 20th through 22nd, the Southeast Regional Fly-In will be held at Middleton Field, Evergreen, Alabama, celebrating 26 years of flying fun, food, and friendship. This year, enjoy a PCA rodeo, KCBS barbecue competition, and the Conca Sausage Festival. And yes, camping on the field is allowed. After these messages, AEA East Connect Conference in Jacksonville rescheduled. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The AEA East Connect Conference, scheduled for mid-September, was canceled due to the destruction throughout Florida caused by Hurricane Irma. AEA has announced that thanks to the recovery efforts of the staff at the Hyatt Regency Jacksonville Riverfront, the AEA East Connect Conference has been rescheduled for December 4th through 5th. Passenger advocate group Flyers Rights is calling attention to an investigative report published last week by the Daily Beast revealing that economy class seats are so tight that crash test dummies were constantly breaking seat back video screens with their heads during simulations. This troubling report also noted that no coach seats today comply with DOT regulations for the brace position. Wings over the Rockies Air and Space Museum enthusiastically announces the arrival of Be the Astronaut, an interactive pod-based exhibit that thrusts visitors into a world of space discovery. Developed with the assistance of NASA's Langley Research Facility, Be the Astronaut challenges museum goers to discover the final frontier. Measure, a U.S. provider of drone services for enterprise customers, has announced its first franchise location with a September 25th grand opening of Measure Springfield in Illinois. The new office provides local face-to-face -face service for businesses in central Illinois, that are interested in using aerial data collection to improve productivity, control costs, and increase workplace safety. On October 13, 2017, the International Women's Air and Space Museum will host Dinner with a Slice of History, featuring a special presentation of the McRobertson Air Race as told by local Cleveland historian Bill Makesner. Dinner will begin at 6.30 p.m. with the program beginning shortly thereafter. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona, Florida has seen a significant uptick in enrollment in light of forecasts of a pilot shortage on the horizon and the growth of the airline industry. Ken Burns, chair of the flight department, reports that the school enrolled 1,330 new students for the current academic year, up 16% from last year. ERAU has increased its student flights from 280 to 300 per day, according to Burns. It has added four training aircraft and purchased a new flight simulator to handle the increase. The university has also hired 20 new flight instructors, with plans to add 30 to 40 more in the coming months, 
bringing the total number of instructors to 200. Many of those instructors are ERAU students themselves, working towards the 1,500 hours needed to move on to a first officer slot at a regional airline. The number of students is the highest it's been since 2001, when 1,500 students were enrolled in the program. Thereafter, 9-11 had a significant impact on the airline industry, and enrollment dropped. Now, with regional carriers becoming more aggressive in hiring pilots and some significant increases in starting pay, the career path is becoming more attractive, Burns said. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.